Welcome back to the Tori and Ren YouTube channel. Before we get started with this week's project, I wanted to quickly discuss the mini shell bag project that I posted two weeks ago. So this is the project that I shared and this is the size of the bag. But recently I experimented and made kind of an ultra mini version. So it's teeny tiny. This one here has a swivel hook on the side that you can hook up to keys or even another bag and have it hanging. And I wanted to ask a quick question, um, maybe in the comments you can let me know, but I posted a short and an Instagram reel explaining how I changed the original dimensions to get this size. Um, but I did um, see a comment asking for a tutorial. So I was just gonna ask if anyone wanted a detailed tutorial on how to get this size bag, because I can do a new round and explain how to make the bottom template so that um, you can make one of these two and have both sizes. So just let me know in the comments down below and I can definitely incorporate that into my posting schedule. Maybe one of my weeks I'll do that instead of a different project. So let me know down below and I will do that. Getting back to this week's project, we're gonna be making one of these double-sided zipper wallets. They're nice and small and compact, so they're great for on the go. They have two zipper pockets on each side that are actually separate. So you can put different things on each side, maybe cash on this side, change on this side, or even lip gloss. You can close them up. They also have this handy card slot, so you can put a credit card here, maybe some cash, or even store membership cards. And then you can just close this up and they won't fall out or go anywhere. And what's also handy about these is you can actually either attach a D-ring or a swivel hook here. So for the swivel hook, you could attach it to keys, or for the D-ring, if you have a wrist strap, you can actually clip it onto here and then you can use it on the go. So this is the back. This one here has a moth or a butterfly. I'm not exactly sure. This one here has a nutcracker. This one has the same floral print that's on the front. And then this one here has a bunny on the back and I just fussy cut that one. So there's a lot of options um, for choosing the type of materials you want. You can even mix it up. You can do the pocket a different color, the strap a different color, um, and then even the back. It's really up to you. So if you'd like to make one of these, you can keep watching this video. I have the full measurements and instructions in it, or you can check out my Etsy link down below for the written instructions, but let's get started. So just like my last video, I'm going to have an example here on the side so that I can tell you what each piece is for. So starting with print A, you're going to need one piece measuring three and a half wide by 14 and a half high. If you're using directional fabric, you want the design to run vertically like mine is. And that's for this pocket here because it is going to fold smaller. For print A, you're also going to need one piece measuring four and a half wide by six high. So as you can see, the direction runs vertically and you can fussy cut your design in the center. This is for the piece here on the back. You're then going to need two zipper tabs measuring the width of your zipper, so approximately one inch, this is my zipper here, by two and a quarter, and you want the direction of the fabric to run vertically because these tabs are going to be vertical on our bag, as you can see here. Of print A, you're also going to need one piece measuring two and a quarter wide by two and three quarters high, and if you're using directional fabric, you once again want it to run vertically because this is the closure piece here with the snap, so you want that direction to be vertical. Now, this next piece of print A is actually an optional piece, and this is for the D-ring or swivel hook tab that's over here on your bag. Now, because the suede is quite thick that I'm going to be using for print B, I wanted to give the option of using 100% quilting cotton instead for that swivel hook or D-ring tab. So if you're using 100% quilting cotton, you're going to use a piece that measures two and a quarter by one and a half. If you're using faux suede, you're going to use a piece that measures one and a quarter by one and a half. Okay, and this is because this is going to fold in a lot more to conceal the raw edges. This is going to fold in a lot less, which is why it's smaller. Now, I recommend using the 100% quilting cotton. If your machine doesn't sew... Sorry, my dog is scratching himself. Um, if your machine doesn't do well with layers. So if you sew over this, it's going to be very thick over here. So I do recommend this if your machine um, doesn't do so good with layers. 
Now for print B, you're also gonna need another piece measuring four and a half wide by six high. If you're using directional fabric, you want the direction to run vertically, just like the other print A piece measuring the same size. And that's for the front of the bag here where the wallet's pocket is. Of print C, you're gonna need four pieces measuring six inches by four inches. And the direction of the fabric is totally up to you. They are gonna be like this inside the bag. So if you want the direction to run vertically, you can. Or if you want the direction to be sideways, you can have it running this way. Totally up to you. Because the bag kind of rotates depending on how you use it, I chose not to use directional fabric for mine. Um, what I was gonna say though is it's four pieces because you have two per pocket. So if you wanna change the color of lining that you have in each pocket, you can do two for one and two for the other. Just make sure when you're sewing each side of your zipper, you put the same one with the same zipper. Next, you're gonna need two number three nylon zippers measuring five and a quarter. Mine are metal lookalike zippers by Sally Tomato, and they come in a package like this. So they're sold by the yard, and I just cut them down to size and then added a pull into each of them. We no longer need this, so I'm gonna set it aside. You'll then need a piece of lightweight cotton woven interfacing measuring 14 and a half high by three wide, and I'm using SF 101. Of fusible fleece, you'll need two pieces measuring four and a half by six. I'm using Pellon 987F, but you can use another lightweight fusible fleece. Next, you'll need a set of snaps. I'm using 10 millimeter halo snaps, and you're gonna need the two different ends of the closure so that they close together. Now here I have another option for you. You can either use a half inch swivel hook or a half inch D-ring for the tab on the side of the bag. So for our first step, we're gonna start with fusing. So we're gonna fuse the four and a half by six inch pieces of fusible fleece to the wrong side of our print A and print B pieces of the same size. So we're gonna fuse those and make sure the glue or bumpy side faces the wrong side. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our cotton interfacing and we're gonna center it. So center that three inch side with the three and a half inch side of the three and a half by 14 inch piece of print A. We're gonna center it and then we're also gonna fuse it. So that glue or bumpy side should also face the wrong side of the fabric. For the sewing steps of our bag, we're actually gonna start by making all of these small extra stuff first. So the card pocket, the closure, and the tab here. That way when we assemble it, we can just start sewing everything together all in one long stretch. Now that everything's fused, we're gonna take our print A card pocket piece measuring 14 and a half by three and a half, and we're gonna make some markings using an erasable marking pen. So I'm just gonna align the top three and a half inch edge with my mat, and then I'm gonna mark one inch down, so here and here. Then I'm gonna mark seven inches down, so over here and over here. What these markings are is this bottom one is gonna be folded across and brought up to the top marking. Once everything is sewn, up here will be the top pocket for the cards, and this one will be the second pocket. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna, at the bottom, marking the seven inch one, we're gonna press it so it's nice and creased, and then we're gonna sew a top stitch across this folded edge. Now that your top stitch is sewn on that folded edge, it should look something like this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the folds, bring your fabric back like this. The direction should run vertical. And now we're gonna mark the location of our first side of our snap. So taking a ruler and an erasable marking pen, we're gonna measure a half inch in from this top edge and we're gonna put a dot in the center. So, just like that. So a half inch in, and this is the center and you're gonna put a dot. You're then gonna repeat on the other side as well. With one backing and the protruding side of the snap, we're gonna install it to this piece. So taking the backing, we're gonna put it on the side where the direction is upside down. So the shorter side, if your fabric is not directional. We're gonna place it here. So once it's centered with your marking, you're just gonna push the teeth of the snap through. So the teeth of that halo snap. As you can see, mine are starting to poke through. You're gonna take your backing piece, you're gonna place it on top and you'll feel it when it aligns properly. Then, then you're gonna take the installation tool that comes with your snap, I believe this is an anvil, and you're gonna align it on top. You'll again, you'll feel it when it's aligned properly. 
Then you're gonna get a hammer or a mallet and you're gonna hammer it in till it's nice and secure, okay? I can't do it on this table because it will shake the table. It's not a very strong table. Now that the snap is installed, it should look something like this. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna open up our fabric and we're gonna take that folded edge with our top stitch and we're gonna bring it to our top marking that's one inch down. So we're gonna align it like that. And what you can do is you can sew a couple stitches here and here to hold it in place so it doesn't move. Then you're gonna take this bottom three and a half inch edge and you're gonna align it with the top three and a half inch edge like so. So it'll look like this and everything should be sandwiched in the middle. What you're gonna do is you're gonna sew around. The only thing is on this top edge, we're gonna sew it using a half inch seam allowance while we're gonna sew the sides with a quarter inch seam allowance. We're also gonna leave a two inch opening here at the top. We will not be sewing this folded edge. So it should look like this. Once it's sewn around, you're then gonna take some pinking shears or just regular scissors and you're gonna trim off some of this excess up here and around the corner as well because you want a nice corner when you turn this inside out. And you wanna make sure not to go too close to the seams because you don't want them to fall apart. So if you're turning it inside out and you find the wrong side of the snap is facing you, what you're gonna do is you can actually turn it back inside out like this. So tuck that outside one inside the other one and the right side of the snap will show. Then you can take a knitting needle and gently punch out those corners. So you can use a knitting needle or I believe it's called a point turner to punch these corners out so that they're nice and sharp. Once it's fully turned inside out, your card pocket should look something like this. We're now gonna take it to the iron and give it a good press. Mine's super wrinkly over here, so it needs a press. You're also gonna make sure that the raw edges of your opening are tucked inside and the edge is nice and flush so you can't see the opening. Once it's all pressed, you're gonna go to the sewing machine and similar to this top stitch here, you're gonna sew a top stitch across this top edge to secure that opening. Now, the reason I did a half inch seam allowance on this top edge is because sometimes when we're turning things out of small openings, the fabric can stretch a lot. And if you have a half inch um, seam allowance, you have a little bit more fabric in here to work with to make your opening nice and flush. So it was just to make it a little bit easier. Now that the top stitch is done up here, we're gonna set this aside for now. These next few pieces share very similar steps, so I'm gonna show you them back to back. So here I have the two and a quarter by two and three quarter inch print A piece. I just have the wrong side facing up, but this is the closure piece. I then have the two and a quarter by one and a half inch print A piece. This is the optional 100% quilting cotton D-ring or swivel hook tab. And then I have the print B version of that same piece measuring one and a quarter by one and a half. So I'm gonna start by moving these two aside for now. Starting with the print A closure piece, what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip to the wrong side like I have here. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna bring the bottom two and a quarter inch edge up by a quarter of an inch, so in, sorry. And then you're gonna press it to crease it. What this does is when everything is folded up, it actually finishes this edge. So we don't have to worry about any raw edges at the bottom of our closure piece. Once that's creased, you're gonna bring the outer edges together. So to fold it in half with the wrong sides facing, and you're gonna press again to crease that center. You're gonna open it up, and then you're gonna bring those outer raw edges into the creased middle, just like so. You're gonna press to crease those outer folds and then fold one more time so that all of the raw edges are nice and folded inside. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna sew close to the edge on both sides to secure all of those folds. Taking the print A piece measuring two and a quarter by one and a half, we're gonna do something similar, but we're not gonna be folding that two and a quarter inch edge in by a quarter of an inch because we don't need any of these sides to be finished because this is going to fold and then get sewn in. So what we're gonna do similar to the last piece is we're gonna fold it in half with wrong sides facing. We're gonna press to crease it. We're gonna open it back up again, bring those outer raw edges into the crease middle, just like so, press to crease it, and then fold one more time just like last time to conceal all of those raw edges inside. 
We're then going to do the same thing and sew close to the edge on both sides to secure those folds. So if you selected the faux suede version of the D-ring tab, what we're going to do is we're going to flip to the wrong side and then we're going to fold those outer edges into the middle, so to meet in the middle. Now you can use a protective layer of fabric and press this, or you can get something like this, which is rinse away basting tape or any sort of seam tape. And you can actually stick some in here so that these edges stay glued inside and don't move. Then what you're gonna do is similar to the other pieces, you're gonna sew on both sides to secure that fold. Now, because this material doesn't fray, we can actually leave these raw edges inside because when this gets folded, they're nice and tight inside and you will never see them because of how small this piece is. Once your pieces are sewn, they should all look like this. Going forward, I'm only gonna be using the suede D-ring tab, but your 100% quilting cotton will be in place of it and it'll look just like this. With that same finished edge of our closure piece, we're now gonna install the remaining side of our snap, so the flat side. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure a quarter of an inch up from that finished edge and then we're going to mark the center. That's the location of where our snap's going to be. Now, depending on which side you want to be the top, you're going to take your flat or halo side of your snap and you're going to push it through in line with that dot. So I'm just going to push mine through as an example, but I'll do a better job of centering it when I actually install mine. So you're going to push it through so that the pegs come through. And then just like that last time, you're going to align this on top and you'll feel it when it's aligned perfectly. And then you're gonna get your installation tool or the anvil, I think that's what it's called, I still don't know, but you're gonna place it on top and then you're gonna hammer it closed. I don't know where I put mine, so I have to look for it. But yeah, you're gonna put it on top here and then you're gonna use either a hammer or mallet to secure the snap in place. Once your snap is installed, it'll look something like that and we're gonna set it aside. With both of our zippers and our print A zipper tabs, we're now gonna start adding them to our zippers. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna find the direction that the zipper closes toward by moving it. So you can see it opens this way and it closes this way. So you're just gonna open that side, the side that it closes toward. You can do that to this zipper and to this zipper. You're then gonna flip the zippers like this and you're gonna align one tab with the right side of the fabric facing the back of the zipper. So just like this and this on the closed side of the zipper, not the open side. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna sew across using a half inch seam allowance for both zippers. I'm back from my sewing machine and I have both of my tabs sewn to my zippers. Something I quickly wanna note is about the direction of the fabric. So if you're using directional fabric from your, for your tabs, you're gonna want the top of the print to be here in the bottom of the print to be here. That way, when you fold it over, the direction of your fabric is going to be correct. As you can see here, this is the bottom of a house. I know it's a really tiny piece, so it's hard to tell. If you put it upside down, you're going to have one like mine because I wasn't paying attention. And the face of the cat is now upside down. Since it's a really tiny piece, I don't mind, so I'm going to leave it. But if you're using directional fabric, you can orient your piece correctly. <laughs> So what you're going to do now is with your tabs sewn like this, you're going to open them up so that the right side of the fabric is showing, and then you're going to flip to the right side, both zippers. I've already creased mine, so it's easier to show you, but you're going to fold that outer edge in and then back over the zipper to case that raw edge. You're then going to have your fold in line or on top of that seam to cover it, and then you're going to sew across close to the edge to secure it. Something I've said in previous videos, is you can actually sew a couple stitches right here and right here just to hold it in place so when you sew across it doesn't move and you're going to re repeat that with this zipper here once your zipper tabs are sewn they should look something like that taking our print a and our print b exterior pieces we're going to do some markings with an erasable marking pen so what we're going to do on the four and a half inch edges the top and bottom we're going to mark a half inch in on the six inch sides so one two, three, and four. And then you're gonna repeat on the print A piece. I already have mine here, as you can see. And this is so we can center our zippers on each of these six inch sides. Starting with our print B exterior piece and our two zippers, we're gonna start installing them both at the same time. 
So what you want to do is have your zippers like this. You want the open end to the top and the tabs to the bottom. This is because when our D-ring tab or swivel hook tab is up here, we don't want the weight of objects with this like this potentially opening our zipper and things falling out. We want the tab to the bottom and we want this closing upward. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this half of the tape we're going to align it vertically with that half inch marking and we're going to sew across close to the edge just to hold it in place and you're going to do the same thing on this side so you're going to take this side of the tab place it vertically or sorry parallel with this outer edge and the right side of the tape to the right side of the fabric and you're just going to sew across to secure now that they're attached it'll look a little funny but don't worry we'll fix it what we're going to do is we're actually going to rotate our zipper so that the edge of the zipper is now aligned with this six inch edge. We're going to fix the fold here so it's nice and neat. We're going to sew across here to secure that curve. And then we're also going to align our tab with the half inch marking at the bottom and secure it in place by sewing a couple stitches here as well. Then you're going to repeat the same thing on this side. So we're going to rotate our zipper so it's now aligned with the edge. Fix our fold here so it's neat and tidy. Sew a couple stitches across here to secure. And then align our tab here with the half inch marking and once again sew to secure it. Once it's secured, it'll look something like this. You have your two curved ends of the zipper and your tab secured in place. You're then going to flip over to the fusible fleece side and you're just going to sew on both sides to secure the zipper using a quarter inch seam allowance. Once that's sewn, it should look something like that. You're then going to grab two pieces of your print C lining. Mine are starting to fray, I've noticed. What you're going to do is you're going to place one on this side with the right side of the fabric facing the back of the zipper and the right side of the exterior. And then you're going to flip to the fusible fleece side and you're going to sew across in line with the seam you just sewed to sew the zipper to the exterior. Then you're going to open this up and you're going to place the other lining piece for the other pocket on this side, again with the six inch edges aligned in the right side of the fabric facing the back of the zipper and the right side of the exterior. And you're gonna repeat the same process by sewing on the fusible fleece side. Now that the lining is sewn to the exterior, you're just gonna open both pieces up so that the right sides are visible. And then you're gonna press your fabric away from your zipper on both sides. So just like that, and then just like that on this side. Once they're pressed, you're going to sew a top stitch here on this side of the zipper and here on this side of the zipper. The only thing is when sewing this side, you want your lining to be out so it doesn't get caught underneath. And the same thing when sewing this side, you want the opposite lining to be out and out of the way. Another thing to note is when ironing, you don't want to put direct heat on the faux suede material because it does have plastic content and it may melt. Now that the top stitches are done on both zippers, we're going to start assembling everything that we sewed earlier, starting with the card pocket. Now, if we look at this piece, we want it upright and not upside down because we don't want things to fall out of it. So we're going to take a look at our piece and we're going to see which side is the top. If you remember earlier, we made sure that the side that our zipper closed toward went to the same side. This is our top. So when we place our card pocket, we want it oriented like this, but we want it centered. So what you're going to do is you're going to find the middle of all of the sides of the print B piece as well as the card pocket piece. You can do so by either using your mat or by folding each side in half like so and marking where that folds, so the middle here. So I've already done it to all of the sides of my pieces, so here, 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 and here, as well as all of the sides of my card pocket. And what we can do now is we can make sure that each of these markings line up. So the center here, over here, and then down here. That way we know that our card pocket is right in the middle. Once we've aligned it with all those markings, we're going to sew around starting here, going down here, pivoting, going here, pivoting again, and ending over here. Making sure to backstitch a lot up here, over here, here, and here because these are the areas where the most tension is going to happen when we put things in these pockets. Now that that's secure, we're going to add our D-ring tab and our closure piece. So starting with the closure piece, you're going to center it with that center marking that we use to center the card pocket. 
We're going to line up the raw edge up there. And then we're just going to sew across to secure and hold it in place because we are sewing around. But we're just going to sew it here to hold it in place. And then you're just going to make sure that it snaps closed. So mine does. Next, what you're going to do is you're going to grab your D-ring tab. As I said earlier, I'm using this suede one. But if you're using the 100% quilting cotton one, you'll do the same. You're going to insert either your D-ring or your swivel hook. You're going to fold it in half. And then in line with this outer edge of the card pocket, we're going to sew it. So again, it's a basting stitch. So we're going to cl sew close to the edge, making sure that the two pieces are perfectly aligned with each other. So I'm going to sew both of these. Now that those two pieces are temporarily secured in place, we're ready to attach our zipper to our remaining print A piece. So what we're going to do is we're going to move our lining to the back and we're going to start with this side of our zipper. Because we want this print vertically, we're going to have our piece oriented just like this, so both are vertical. We're going to open our zipper and then take this half of the zipper and just like before, align it parallel with that outer edge and we're going to sew across. Again, close to the edge, just to secure in place. Now that it's secure, we're going to flip our exterior over like so. And then just like before, we're going to rotate our zipper so that our zipper has a nice bend here. We're going to clean up this fold so it's neat and tidy. We're going to sew a couple stitches here to secure the bend. And then we're going to align our tab with the remaining half inch marking over here. And sew again, close to the edge, just to hold it in place. Now that that's secure, you're just going to flip over to the fusible fleece side and you're going to sew across using a quarter inch seam allowance. Once that's all sewn, you're going to get one of your remaining aligning pieces and you're going to place it on top with the right side of the fabric facing the back of the zipper and the other lining pieces. You're going to align the top six inch edges right here and then you're going to sew across, but you're going to sew on the fusible fleece side in line with the seam you just sewed. Once it's sewn, you're going to open it up like so by bringing the wrong side of the lining and exterior together. You're then going to press your fabric away from the zipper. And we're actually not going to be sewing a top stitch on this side of the zipper or this side when we attach it to here. Here, That's because when this gets sewn together, it's going to form a tube and we're not going to be able to open it up and sew a top stitch. So technically we can sew one here. But if we sew one here, it's going to look off balance if this one doesn't have it as the only side without a top stitch. So we leave both of these. But we want to press our fabrics away from the zipper so that way later on, they are away from the zipper and they're not going to interfere with opening and closing the zipper. Now that that's pressed, we're going to attach the remaining side of the zipper to the remaining six inch side of the print A piece. So we're going to open this side up. And this is going to be a little bit trickier than normal because we are going to form a tube, but we're still going to be able to do it. So you're going to take that half of the zipper and you're going to line it up here at the top since that is the corresponding side. And you're going to do the same thing. You're going to have it parallel here to this edge and you're just going to sew across close to the edge. Now that that's sewn, just like before, you're going to bring the edge of the zipper to the remaining six inch side here. Where the zipper curves, you're just going to make it neat and tidy right here and you're going to sew a couple stitches and then you're going to bring your tab to the remaining half inch marking and you're just going to sew across to secure. Now that that's secure, you're just going to sew across using a quarter inch seam allowance on the fusible fleece side. You're now going to place your remaining piece of lining fabric on top with the right side of the fabric facing the back of the zipper and the other lining piece. And you're going to line the six inch edges up here and then you're going to sew across again on the fusible fleece side in line with the seam you just sewed. With that sewn we're going to repeat the same process as before ironing it away from the zipper but this time we're not going to be able to press the print A piece away from the zipper because it's inside and it's connected to everything so we're just going to press the print C lining piece away from the zipper. Now that everything is sewn together and connected, we're going to be sewing all the way around. And when we do so, we want our zippers pointing in towards the lining, so the tab bent into the lining. And because of this, we actually can sew a couple stitches here to line up these ends. So here, and then over here, and the same thing on this side. But that is optional. You don't have to do it. 
I just like to do that because it makes sure these stay nice and matched here and here. And the middle, so the center here, doesn't move. It doesn't shift like this. And then everything is offset. I like to do those little basting stitches so nothing moves. Now that those are basted, they look something like that. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna bring all of your lining pieces together with right sides facing. So here and here. So everything with right sides facing. And we're gonna sew around, leaving a three inch opening in one of the linings. So you don't have to leave it over here, only in one of them. So we're gonna sew all the way around and then stop again over here. Now the opening size is also your choice. If you're more comfortable with a bigger opening, you can leave a bigger one. It's totally up to you but I'm gonna leave a three inch opening. Oh, quickly, I just left the frame and came back in. You wanna make sure you backstitch a ton on this closure piece, as well as the D-ring or swivel hook tab because you don't want these to come apart. They're gonna have a lot of tension, especially if you hang this on keys or a um, wrist strap. So you really want these secured. So make sure to backstitch a bunch there and there. Now that it's sewn all the way around, you're just gonna turn it inside out from the opening you left in your lining. As you're turning it inside out, it'll look something like this. You just wanna pull everything out, including in here. So all of these tabs, push them out. And then if you want, you can take it to the iron and give it a good press, and then we're gonna seal the opening. Mine still needs a bit of pressing, but like usual, what you're gonna do is you're gonna tuck the raw edges of your opening inside so that the edge is nice and flush. You're gonna give it a good press and then you're gonna sew across either by machine or sew it closed by hand. You're then gonna tuck your lining inside your bag. And when you're tucking your lining inside, you wanna make sure that you have one to one side, so one to the back side and one to the front side. That way they'll sit nicely. Once the opening is closed in the lining, your double-sided zipper wallet is now complete. So I really hope you enjoyed this sewing tutorial. If you're looking for other projects to make, you can check out my other videos here on my YouTube channel. You can also check out my Etsy for the written instructions for all of my projects. I also want to say a big thank you to everyone who's recently subscribed. Your support helps me to keep doing these videos, so I really appreciate it. But um, that's all for today, so I'll see you all next time.